listening to The Sauce, recorded live in the FingerLakes1.com studios, deep beneath historic downtown Seneca Falls, New York, featuring Dandy R&D, Mysterious Taco Girl, Only Sometimes, and Saucy Joe. And now, uh, Mike. Good evening, Saucepod streamers from coast to coast. It's me, Tony Sometimes, and this is episode number 122 of the Sauce Podcast. Recorded live in the FingerLakes1.com studios deep beneath historic downtown Seneca Falls, New York. It's Monday, October 21st, 2013, and tonight we'll be talking about a recap of Mysterious Taco Girl's annual Halloween bash. What a Canandaigua man did with two quarts of his own urine. And what Polly always knows about strangers in your dreams. Our weekly recommendations, tweet of the week, dandy's choice, and much, much more per usual. I'm joined up here tonight by my saucy compañeros, Dandy Aaron D. Great. And Mysterious Taco Girl. Awesome. And Saucy Joe. Hey. So, Mysterious Taco Girl, every year, about this time, you have a Halloween bash. Which uh, number is it? What year? How many? Annual? Sixth. The sixth annual. Yeah, it says it right here now. (laughs) Mysterious Taco Girl's parties include these awesome photo booth cards where you could step into the photo booth. Who is that? And some nice branding. Not a lot of Halloween parties are branded. Is that Willie Robertson on that card? Media Stew makes a poster every year. Oh, wow. I didn't see it around town. Uh, it's invite only, so it's not around town. It's only at the party. And here's a picture of the old sauce poop pod <laughs> the crew. <sauce> poop. <laughs> <laughs> old Media Stew and everybody. Yeah, There's Mysterious Taco Girls wearing the... <coughs> A duck head. I licked your beard in that picture. You did <laughs> lick my <laughs> that final must, shot. They must lick my beard. Now, I do have some photos of uh, your guys' costumes here. Oh, no. Here's the mysterious taco girl and her gang of uh, what appears to be the Breakfast Club. Yep, that uh, would be they us. They did a fine job. That's a prize winning uh, group. I was going to ask you who won the prizes, but let's get through I these first, first here. Place, um, real, what's the name of the girl in the black, uh, the character? Well, it's Ali Sheedy. Yeah, I heard her yeah. name is apparently Allison in the movie. That's the one that makes you know what movie it is. If she uh, wasn't in there. <laughs> the Judd <laughs> the Judd Nelson's pretty good. That is a pretty good one, yeah. That is pretty good. He, oh, he is wearing his gloves in that picture. He wasn't wearing them at one point and I pointed that out. And then Saucy Joe seen here with a <laughs> duck. That I come I'm a command I command that duck. <laughs> I'm in command of that duck. How much did that uh, costume set you back? Four ninety nine. <laughs> Saucy Joe won his Duck Dynasty. Uh, his specific character. Yes. Yeah, what's his name? Willie. Willie Robertson, the main dude there, right? Yeah. The head honcho. And to yeah. f- finish off the costume and begin it, you basically just put a American flag bandana on That's your head. That's all I needed to do. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I got a lot of compliments on the Facebooks about that costume. People were really great. into it. Yeah. Duck Dynasty is a popular show. And that then, one was easier than my last year's costume of Wayne oh, from Wayne's right. World, <laughs> which all I did was wear a hat that said Wayne's World on it and, <laughs> and these shoes that I'm wearing now and a black T-shirt. And that one was actually easier because <laughs> all I had was a bandana. Next year, I don't know what I'm going to do. Dandy, what the heck is, kind of costume is this? Oh it's a great God. Dandy costume. Dandy comes up with good ones. Classic, classic dandy. dandy. Six years Dandy's gone as something like that. That's not true. I wasn't too impressed with this one. Oh, I think that was great. What do you mean? Fork in the road? (laughs) (laughs) It's hysterical. It's dandy. Sons of bitches are lucky I put tape and a fork on my shirt. I know. I'm excited if he does anything. He looks real excited about the party. (laughs) He was. Fucking 32-year-old man dressing up. What? That's why I put a bandana on. I don't don't (laughs) like it. 
so Dandy took a black shirt, took some uh, white tape, m- making it look like a road, and then it was ta- harder than white tape because it was Velcro. No, it was white tape. Oh. Just white tape, masking tape. Yeah, you're giving him too much credit. <laughs> and he put a fork on his chest, and then it's a fork in the road. I had to buy that fork too. It's a plastic How fork. Much that I have plenty of forks at the party. A whole box of them for a dollar nine. So Danny wins the award for cheapest costume at a dollar nine. What <laughs> mine was four ninety nine. I went beat to me. The, I went to the gas station and I was just gonna take a fork. Yeah, that's what I was. They didn't have any, oh. so I had to buy some. I could have given you a fork, man. Well, so who won the costumes prizes? Best and worst. What um, were the what were the categories? We didn't give out a worst this year. No, everyone said bashes me. Mean. Yeah, we all For know the who would have won that. Um, Tiny Danger's sister dressed up as a uh, Mennonite. Yeah, and she won. That was a good word. That was a prize-winning costume. Oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, what was the other prizes? Uh, my group won for best group. And was it the only group? No, there was, it was like a couples or group. It was couples dress. slash oh, group. Gotcha. Usually, no, I just want to point this out. Because usually, <laughs> it's just couples. It's just couple, <laughs> best couples costume. But this year, I noticed the, the sheet said best couples slash group costume. <laughs> which is obvious. Mysteriously. Yeah, mysteriously. Mysteriously. All right, I'll let you do the math. Yeah, I mean, come on. Look at how look at we how look horrible right now. We were uh, like a zombie of some kind. I think it it's because you're close. surrounded by the uh, dark clothing. I think it's lighter in here than normal. Uh, I think it's because I got my iPad shining in my face there. Oh yeah, that is better. That is better. So no worse costume, just those two awards: group and best. No, there or was one more. Most unique, most, most scary, original. Scariest? That's what it was. Most original. And I won. Nice job. <laughs> Thanks, man. You won the most original? Yeah. Wow. What about um, old Stu's wife, Media Stu's wife? She was dressed as something. She was Little Red Riding Hood. No, uh, she was wait. the girl from the Box of Raisins. No, that's kind of original. She was. That's what she was supposed <laughs> to be. Yeah. The Sun Made Raisin Girl? Yeah. She Is did. that why she had grapes? She had a big basket full of grapes. Yep. That is ridiculous. If I would have known that, I would have folded her up and put her knees on her chest, <laughs> like you do with the box of raisins. <laughs> well, glad to hear it was a success. Yeah, the best costume so. there. I didn't get my invite. The best costume sure. was Tiny Danger's costume. A skeleton costume. <laughs> yep, but it was he had like a skeleton uh, penis too. That ah yeah, got there, there was an air bladder in his arm that he could squeeze, and the penis would go up and down. <laughs> that was really funny <laughs> to see. Because I didn't notice it at first. That is funny. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever gotten an invite. Oh, we've and been. Plus, I knew you had plans. Yeah, we did. There was another party just up the road, a disco party for people of all ages. It really was for people of all ages. Um, and that was fun, too. That was fun, too. But, uh, yeah, we've been invited, and I don't think we've come ever come, so I don't spra- blame you for not I sending invites anymore. anymore. Yeah. We didn't. We never came. It's always a. This is a sixth annual. So yeah, the first one was when my daughter's was her first Halloween, and this one's earlier than usual. Don't you usually do it around Halloween? Yeah, some family obligations take me out of town next weekend. Uh, and last year I did it after Halloween. It just doesn't have the same effect. It's no, cool because you can get half off costumes. Yeah, that's terrible though. You can't have store. a Halloween party after Dandy Halloween. Would have made it like a bandit at fifty but cents. But when it's afterwards, Could've it's not perfect. the same. What is this, Canada? I mean, they do Boxing Day it, after Christmas, right? Boxing Day? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, hey, Christmas is coming up. It is uh, getting cold out. But um, only so many shopping days left until Christmas. Yeah, we could, there's probably a number we could assign to that. But first, let's find out what everybody's drinking up here tonight. man drink like that and he don't eat. He is going to die. We save hard drinks in here for men who want to get drunk fast. Fat babe, slide a piece of the pole to the I run the job. Look at here. Dandy, Aaron D, what are you drinking tonight? Oh, he's got a story for this one. Fruit water. That's oh, an yeah. interesting how's, bottle. How's that work? I don't know. I haven't tasted it yet. I thought it Crack was... Crack it open. Let's I thought do it. it was, uh, Sauce pot unboxing. What did I think it was? You thought it was vitamin water. Vitamin water. water. Can you show it to the camera? It, it, it looks yeah. so similar the graphical stylings because um, it's the same company. 
No, lift the key. <laughs> yeah, but too high. Yeah. Fruit oh, water. Oh, I get it. Why you thought it was. So what's the verdict? It looks like it has a nasty aftertaste. It's got a little carbonation on tour. Yeah, I didn't want carbonation. So you would not recommend that? <coughs> Sparkling. Zero calorie. No, I would not. Is that all you got? It's awful. That's all you got to drink? <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> it's made in New York. Is that all you got to drink tonight? Yeah. Why would I have something else? I don't know. I thought you might have a backup. Because that sucks. That's too bad. No, I thought it's this gonna was... going to be a tough show for I you. I thought it was vitamin water until I got in the elevator. elevator. The elevator, yes. Uh, Mysterious Taco Girl, what are you drinking? Uh, coffee with cream and sugar from the Donuts Dunkin'. The famous Dunkin' Donuts. The Donuts Dunkin'. Saucy Joe? I'm drinking chamomile lemon tea out of a hobo codes mug. Now you really switched it up. Well, I don't feel very well. Is that because of Saturday night? Or no, I wish. No, I felt fine yesterday. You wish you felt like shit because of Saturday night rather yeah. than just... Uh, rather than I'm going to be sick. You got a cold coming on. Yeah. So I decided to go with this chamomile lemon tea, but it's having a... Adverse effect on me because it's making me sleepy. Tea does that. The decaf chamomile tea for certain. I, I need tea, caffeinated or not. It's just that warm, fuzzy feeling that you get that makes you want to snuggle up in bed. Mm-hmm. I'm drinking a large coffee with cream and one sugar from the dunk. You think I run the job? Look at here. Man, drink like that and he don't eat. He is going to die. So on Friday night, the night before Mysterious Taco Girl's famous party, mm-hmm. went to see Jerry Seinfeld at the Auditorium Theater in Rochester. Who's that? And uh, I gotta tell you, it was uh, it was good to nobody's surprise. That guy's funny. Um, one member of our party of fifteen we had a party of fifteen. Can you imagine? It's a lot. One member of our party of fifteen. I'd say she's 36 years old. Get ready for this, y'all. Had never heard of Jerry Seinfeld. No way. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That's why I said get ready because your pants are never about to be blown off. Never seen an episode of Seinfeld. Never heard of Jerry Seinfeld. Didn't know who he was. Was just like, I'll go. I don't. That she, she didn't really like comedy that much. And then when she went, she had thought it was the funniest thing ever. Laughed her ass off. But, but isn't that odd? I didn't know that was even possible. I know it. I feel like it's just so unbelievable. I was there, and it wasn't a ruse. I can guarantee you that. I can guarantee you that. Um, I'll tell you off air. It's not. I mean, this is really embarrassing (laughs) for that person (laughs) (laughs) to not know who Jerry Seinfeld was. Um, But Jerry Seinfeld's really the master. Like he came out, and right away, the first thing he did was start making fun of the name Auditorium Theater. So it was like a custom job just for us, you know? Because nice. it is kind of a silly name. Yeah. What? Can't you guys get this sponsored? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, he did his thing, hour and 15 minutes, and that was that. Now, I've seen him in, I guess you don't say in concert. I've seen him live before, and I also thought he was hilarious. Um, He was... Swore more than I thought he was going to swore or curse. Yeah, he did. He swore a little bit. Um, Because he's that's his thing is normally that he's a clean comic, but he did curse in the show. Nothing bad, not like no. But I was surprised. Why do people always make that distinction between clean and dirty? Yeah. Um, because I think a lot of comics, and I think Jerry Seinfeld's one of them, feels that uh, if you can do a clean act, that It's it's harder. It's a higher quality performance right but why do people make that distinction like why do non-comedian why do civilians make that distinction i mean if it's funny to you it's funny to you well for there was a a, a young couple not a young there's a couple in a row and they had brought their like 12 year old daughter to the show and they p- knew that it was family safe for the most sure. part um so i don't know other than that i mean bill cosby has never never works dirty Ever. He never had. No, as a matter of fact, he was much cleaner than Seinfeld was. Sure. Day. That guy's hilarious. Yeah, he was master. And I think people give more respect to a comic who is clean 
But look at somebody like Chris Rock. Yeah. Hel- Never hel- were clean. Hilarious, though. Also hilarious. Right. Equally as hilarious. It's just different. It's just a little different. I'm, I'm not, I don't say one way or the other. I'm just asking why people make the distinction. I think, like I say, more respect to the clean comic a little bit if they were going to fill out ballots for the Comedy Hall of Fame. Why? Because I think uh, that vulgarity can be used as a crutch. And if you can pull it off. A funny word's a funny word, though. Yeah, but it I doesn't think matter if it's a swear word or not a swear word. It's probably true. But I think true, you though. can add. It's not about the words; it's the material, like enthusiasm by saying certain swear words. Yeah, I think it's it's, th- it's it, yeah, but it's about being funny. It's not about being enthusiastic. It's I think it's naturally funny to get mad and swear, in like think, a, like in a comedy routine that that's uh, inherently funny. So if you take that <laughs> away, the ability to go on a rant with a bunch of like f uh, this and f that, I don't believe that. I don't believe I don't believe a swear word makes something funny. It makes it funnier sometimes. So does the affleck, the affliction in your voice though. Well then it's why the then thing. why do people swear at all in comedy routines? Would Chris Rock be funny if he didn't swear? That's the way he talks though. You think he only does that when he does his comedy routine? You don't think he talks like that? I watch drive comedians in cars getting coffee, Seinfeld and Chris Rock and Chris Rock didn't swear that much. I, I, at least not noticeably during that uh, episode where he was having coffee with Jerry Seinfeld. So I don't know. I think people who say people are funnier who don't swear are just being idiots. I don't think it's a matter of being funnier. <laughs> I think it's a matter of, like we said, um, respectability. It's a more, I, I, and I don't know that it is or isn't because I'm not a comedian, but it seems like it would be more challenging to write a clean act. But I don't know that to be true because I've never written a comedy routine. I'm with you, though. I think I agree. I think it's harder to write a clean act. Who's on first? That's the cleanest act of all time. <laughs> so, um, Dandy got choice for us this week? Yep. Wow, because last week's was pretty shocking. Who knows what you have in store this week, but this is the part of the show where Dandy Aaron D makes us choose between one thing or another, and it's not always what you think. Nice shave tonight, Dandy. Bill's one. All right. The first time you go to have (laughs) sex, you either the first time have sex and become blind, okay, or lose your girl slash boy parts and keep your eyes. All right. So the challenge here is what it comes down to is: would you rather have your penis or your eyes? Um, But I have to go back in time. Place myself, <coughs> knowing what I know now about sex. Yeah, see, that's why I don't want to do it. Right. That's I why it can't be. That's why it can't be from birth. It's got to be at the moment you're about to have sex for the first time, right before you do it. This can scenario. It be, can, I'd it, abstain. can it that be would freak from? Me out. The, yeah, <laughs> that would be weird. I'd be like, I'm done. Well, if if you were about to have sex and your penis was just gone and you never got to have sex for that first time, that's what's the point of that. No, you would have sex, right? And then nope. he said, "Right when you're about to, right before you have sex, <laughs> that'd be the worst." Oh, so man. you either have sex forever, blind, or you're never allowed to have sex. Right. I th- and I think it's probably safe. I, maybe you're going to argue this, but I think it would probably be safe to say, starting right now, the next time you go to have sex, you got to pick. It doesn't matter that it would be the first time you ever had sex. You could say, like, it'd right be, now. It'd be an easy choice for me. It would all depend on who I brought home. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to see her, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'd right? be like, I'm out of here. This is more than I bargained for. And I'd yeah. uh, become a monogam... Uh, what's the word? Not monogamous. What? I'd become uh, one of oh, those... Oh, celibate? Celibate. Like, what? Oh, I see what you're going for here. Um, I think that, yeah, I, I need my eyes. I need my eyes. Yeah. I'd give up the sex. What Try what? and masturbate. You don't have any girl or boy parts. Yeah, oh, you do. Right. They oh, go that's away. right. He takes away the oh, parts. Oh, so once so you've part, gotten that far, you're done. done. You're done. Once you've gotten your, you get the news. Do I still have testicles to deliver testosterone and mm-hmm. other hormones and things to my body? No, that's a boy part. Mm. Jeez. 
So basically, I'm a I'm a eunuch. I can. Yeah, I'd go with the eyes, but I wouldn't tell anybody. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't tell anybody. I'd kill the girl I was about to have sex with well, to hide my secret. I'm saying this is probably going to be your wife here. Oh, you know. Who says she's going to stay? Nobody. And how are you going to find a lady? Unless you find someone else who's suffered the same thing. What's Mysterious Taco Girl's choice? Probably my eyes. Yeah, but you don't have anything to lose in terms of what... Are you saying that you'll be sewn up or something? You're saying just like She's sealed it like a Barbie doll. Would be just <laughs> right, <nice>. right. <laughs> she loses her girl parts. Do I lose my boobs too? Yep. Oh, what? That's awful. That's a girl part. No, yeah, yeah, but they're not. It's not like a sexual organ. Oh, wait, so then to I could never is. have. To you it is. So I could never have kids. <coughs> nope. Nor could you breastfeed other kids. <laughs> Nor could you have sex again. It really takes a lot more away from her. Um. Then I changed my vote. What are you going with? Uh, I I go blind. You'd go blind. We'd all go blind, except for Dandy. No, I th- I said I would give up on the sex. I need my eyes. I would keep my eyes. Yeah, I go. I would keep my eyes too. I thought you said go blind. No, I'd keep the eyes. I'd go eyes. I'm pro eyes. She said she'd go blind. Oh wow! Keep her How about parts. you, Dandy? What's your final choice? Oh, I'm going blind. Anybody in the chat room want to weigh in on this? So that's two and two. Um, two eyes. Yeah, that's that's a good choice. You've done it again, Dandy. That guy's the king. That's a tough one. That was an easy one for me. Yeah, I wouldn't consider it easy. And what are you gonna do with no eyes? Think about it. Then you can. Bring I did. Home, you can bring home the <laughs> ugliest girl in the world. You wouldn't know how ugly she was. You're blind. What does that have to do with anything? You couldn't find your, your way home with her, though. Seriously, how are you gonna get home? How are you gonna? You even think know? blind people never find their way home? How are you gonna get out? They just roam around. Chicks this dig world. people with handicaps. It's a awesome show. <laughs> Well, I mean, how are you going to watch a football game? How are you going to... Wh- what are you going to do with no eyes? You listen. Have a lot of sex. Oh, my goodness. I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I'm not 100% on my answer. Sex is pretty visual I for me. I think that's a hard one. I don't think that... It is uh, visual. It is tactile. Yeah, it's I mean... Tactile. It's a great word. It is. Think about it. You lose your eyes. You don't have to work anymore. No. How do you get? Well, how are you going to support yourself by having sex all the time? Disability. Can you claim Medicaid? That? <laughs> well, I was participated in Dandy's <laughs> choice, and I lost my eyes. I chose. I had to choose. I had to choose, and I chose not to work so I can keep my penis. Now, give me my paycheck. Give me some money. <laughs> God damn it! But they can give you a paycheck for like five dollars, and you wouldn't know. Right, you wouldn't even know what you were getting. Well, I, I Here is a hundred dollar bill. <laughs> <laughs> don't spend it all in one place. I don't know. That's a tough one. And in reality, it's an Eminem yeah, rapper. Yeah, a tough one. I might take my answer back. I'm not really too concerned about it because I just think the whole proposition is ridiculous. Well, isn't that the point or of Danny's, Danny's choice? choice yeah. It is, but sometimes he really hits one that makes you think. This one I just think is ridiculous. I don't know. I would miss it. I, would I miss think that's the one. whole point of him. I would miss both. I would miss eyes. I would miss having sex. Is it something I enjoy doing? Hey. Yeah. To all our uh, listeners across the world, including Turkey, 900 and so of you that uh, downloaded or viewed our episode last week, uh, thank you. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Search for uh, FingerLakes1.com. Subscribe to that channel. Go to our website at thesaucepod.com. And subscribe there via RSS. We're on iTunes. You can subscribe there. Rate and review us. Stitcher.com is a pretty neat mobile app that you can enjoy the sauce spot on. And, of course, probably the most streamlined and newest, hippest way that you can connect with the sauce spot is to grab the FingerLakes1.com app at the Google Play or Apple Store. Install that app. And go to FingerLakes1.tv or podcast and just... uh, let your fingers do the walking. You can listen to your car. You can listen live in your car. Yeah. Plug amazing. it into your phone, into your car stereo this through the headphone amazing. jack. Hey, on the way down here, I was listening to the Crash Chord po- Course podcast in my phone. You were? I was. It's a good podcast. It is uh, 
a hot new podcast on the Finger Lakes One dot TV network about demolition derbies. And everybody knows how much the old Tony sometimes loves demolition derbies. Absolutely. Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> Funny cars. Yates County Fair. <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> it's going to be crashy. Crashy. It's going to be crashy. Can you imagine a Turkish, a big hairy Turkish man watching the sauce pod with his big mustache? I haven't checked in a while, but what we're talking about is few, last couple of weeks ago. I checked the stats, and we got like you know twenty something viewers from Turkey. From Turkey, and I'm, you know, <laughs> they just love the American way of life. I suppose they can't get enough. You're talking about Istanbul or Constantinople. I don't know what one. Or they look, uh, they look at Joe and think he's a fellow countryman. They probably do. <laughs> and, and Dandy, who looks like a, uh, he looks like Obi Wan Kenobi tonight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what are you looking for, Dandy? Trying to see my face. You looking for <coughs> Padua? That camera's following my face wherever I go. I can't see it. Now, what if we were to have a bachelor <laughs> auction? <laughs> what if we were to have a bachelor auction? <laughs> Just that would Dandy. be a blast. And it, the Saucepot bachelor auction, mm-hmm. and the only one that we'd auction off would be Dandy. What do you think the bid would go? How high? How much money could we raise? I bet you we could get. For Danny. Ten bucks. So how but no, depends. No, like what no. is it? Is it like a four hour date? I'm is thinking, it a I'm it's an we, overnight ooh. trip with Dandy, Aaron D to the Seneca Marble Falls Ranch? Microtel. <laughs> Do I get to keep my eyes? Yeah, what happens? No, I think if it was just like a I don't know about that <laughs> overnight trip stuff, but if it was just a regular date, and see dinner where it goes, date, see where it goes. I bet you we could get hundred and twenty five for Danny. <laughs> Does that I include dinner though? Does, does that include dinner or does oh, da- Dandy's da- buying? Yeah, Dandy's buying. I'm not. I'm not saying, or I'm saying that there won't be two people betting. Oh, I oh, think I, I think, think we should do it. Uh, you're selling yourself way too short here, pal. We should I do mean, it online. A guy that can come up with that fucking costume. <laughs> there's no, there's no my limit ba- to your backup, earning potential. My backup costume is pretty good too. That's right. Yeah, Dandy's got nice good. eyes, right? Oh, look He's at him. Clean shaven. Look at that guy. Yeah, he's got a good sense of humor. So Bill's one. He's clean <laughs> shaven. He's a strong earner. Yeah. He's got his own house. Ooh, and I, I think you, we might get one fifty two hundred. He's still got his boy parts. I think that he's a. I, I think. <coughs> yeah, anywhere from one twenty five to two twenty five. I was gonna say a couple hundred. I think we should pull this together. But like most things, ideas like this. Uh, the only way I'll do Probably it is never if the person it. who wins me pays for everything. I'm not paying. Well, they already paid for you, though. Now you now you have to show them the Dandy Aaron D experience. That ain't much. <laughs> yeah, I think on. he is. I think you showed him the experience you're right now. <laughs> <'cause> you're saying <laughs> it. You have to pay for it. Well, I say with the sa- we as a sauce by line up, line up the limo, pick up the tab for dinner, and um, that's part of the package. Yeah, sure. All right. But we also get to follow along with video cameras. The Ooh. whole. You know, oh, I'll wear a GoPro. Let's see, I like this, and just see how Dandy interacts with a the with Detroit a one Dandy have, experience. If if this podcast gave me everything they said they were going to give me, I'd be living the high life. What are the podcasts? What do we ever promise you? Skydiving. Oh, that's true. This date. Well, I'm ready to make it happen. With Skydiving's sky over trip. again. I mean, only why? Because it's cold. I think it stops beginning of October. Isn't that what it was last year? I have no idea. But I remember last year it was like two days. It's up to you, man. All you got to do is say, uh, this weekend I'm going skydiving. Give me the money and I'm ready. I want to do it. I'll hook you up. I thought you were going with me. See, now that's where you're starting to I'll say do things that were never said. You said you were going to go. No, I never would have. I'm absolutely terrified of heights. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Why would I ever say that I was going to go? Somebody said you? they were going to go. Probably me. Rudy, maybe? Oh, of course, Rudy. <coughs> maybe media stew. I got no interest in jumping on an airplane. I also am scared of heights and a little claustrophobic. Media stew wouldn't do it. I think he's got no also afraid of being death. in an airplane. Yeah, I don't either. I don't want to be in an airplane. I have skydived. It's yeah, well worth it. Dying would be the worst. It's well worth the risk. Dying? Skydiving. It's worth the risk of dying. <laughs> just how many people do you hear? How many people do you hear that die a year of skydiving? Not that many. But the statistic, so let's say the statistic is 
One in 10,000. I and mean, that's probably high. That's I real high. The way I, I'm just simplifying the math I bet the there's 10,000 people that skydive a day. All right. So let's say it's one in 100,000. How's that? It's definitely like one in the millions. All right. Let's say it's one in a million. Jeez, I'm just trying to make the math simple. <laughs> I don't know. One in a million. I don't know about that. That seems too high. I believe there's that no way, if you're going to die, you're going to die. So if you die skydiving, if you didn't go skydiving that day, some other way you're going to die But here's that day. the thing about the way the world really works. It doesn't <laughs> matter what you believe. <laughs> That's not how it works. Just because you say you believe that doesn't mean that it how is. it works when I jump out of a plane. Yeah, but it gives him a carefree outlook on life. I like to think of it this way. It's like He's saying, not anxious. He's not worried. He's I just going to live his life to the fullest. But right. that's like saying if Dandy walks out in front of a bus and gets hit, he would have died some other way if he didn't walk out in front of the bus intentionally that day. Oh, well, if it wasn't this, it would be something else. Something else. It's your time to go. It's your time to go. Yeah. Well, what, what were you going to say about it there, Saucy I don't Joe? I remember. Every time I take a sip of this tea, I become 3% more sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like really <laughs> taking its toll on me. You're not really sure what's going on. No. Um, I was going to say, I like to think of it this way. If there's like, if say it's one in a million people die skydiving. And you like you said, how many people do you hear about it every year? Well, not that many. But so that one in a million is about to hit. And I'm jumping out of the plane. That's what I'm saying. So, but here's so the you're other proving thing too. my point. So you're saying you have bad luck. So no matter what, no, you're going to die. No, I didn't say I had bad luck. Luck is a different... Luck. So they ever you're just saying you're going to be that I'm saying one millionth guy. It, it, sh she said, how many people do you hear about? And if it's not that many, that makes more sense that that number's coming up. You know, someone's card's going to be pulled. Same. Yeah, you, but here's it happened the other to thing. you on your bike on the way to work. Yeah. A hundred people get hit by a, on a bike by a car a year. Every time you jump on your bike, you could be that next guy. I know. But that doesn't scare you. Someone was hit on their bike in Penyan on Sunday. Yeah, see, you just missed it. Well, yeah, so <laughs> I'd <laughs> save for a little while till the law of averages kicks in again. The other thing, too, is, and I know this doesn't sound appealing, but there are definitely circumstances where parachutes don't come out and you don't die. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. so that would be, that just, would be my luck. So it's not just you don't you don't automatically die if it's a faulty jump. No. No, you don't automatically die if it's a faulty jump, but you do automatically <laughs> die if you hit the ground at nine point eight meters per second squared. No, I'm telling you, people. Whoa, people don't die. They fall and fall and fall and don't die. That would be me. I'd break my neck and I'd be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. And I wouldn't even get the real experience of skydiving because my fucking parachute would right. Yeah, but you'd, get get right. <laughs> you'd just be terrified for that for those seconds as you free fall. At it's it's not velocity. terrifying, though. It is what? so not terrifying. It is if you don't have a parachute, parachute. and it, it doesn't open. All right, so say. Once you real from the moment you realize your parachute isn't going to open. What are you doing? It's terrifying. From that moment on, what are you doing? I'm you just going to enjoy the mysterious fall. Mysterious is like, I'm just going to enjoy it because you know there's a chance that I might not die here if I fall in a pile yeah. of horse manure. I, once the alone. once the parachute pulls and you're floating, that's that's the high life right, there. You're, the you're living. You're I loving. think I would start elbowing the man strapped to my back on the side of the head. Yeah. <laughs> what do you like, mean? Come on! <laughs> Here's the thing: there's three parachutes. The odds of you dying are just so slim. I don't know. I think if one doesn't open, none of them are coming out. No, that always, they always <laughs> open. I agree, but like When I, I went, one person didn't open. The first one didn't open. The second one did. Oh, boy. And then there's and a then hand you, one. And then you jumped after that? After, forget that. I don't that. remember no, the that's, order. That's, well, that's it for me. Who picked the first parachute? Was it the same guy that picked the second parachute? You had one job. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that's his job. Or hers. Pack the parachute properly, people. Well... How do we even get out of that discussion? Speak we promise d and things we don't deliver. Oh, that's, that's right. That's, that's right. not true either. <laughs> one thing that we do... You promised me fame from the show. No, that was never promised. One thing that we do always deliver on a weekly basis is our tweet of the week. This week's Tweet of the Week comes from at Sean O'Conns. That's Sean O'Conns with a Z. Two N's. This will make you feel old. Die Hard came out 67 years ago today. <laughs> I think that's funny. I think over-exaggeration is really funny when it's so blunt like that. Yeah. Could make him fun of the people who uh, post that stuff. But hard to believe, 67 years. <laughs> That's crazy. 
Um, some more tweets here from at Travis Lemire. Lemire, not really important. Tweet, society is funny. They ask you to be yourself, and yet they judge you. True. What do you always hear these days? Just be yourself. Just be yourself. You can't lose. But then society judges you at every turn. Uh, at Michael Earhart tweets, You guys have no life. That's what Earth says to other planets. If they could it's talk. true. That's funny. If they could talk. See what they did there. Um, at SOTTC underscore net tweets, If I have one fault, and I don't, it's that I can't admit my faults. And those are the, all the tweets. That was a pretty bad week. Worth the tweeting. It was a slow week for tweets. I don't know who I'm logged into Twitter with right now, but there's nothing funny. What? Um. I got a question. Okay. Where'd it go? Damn it. Flavor. Two items you'd combo together to help you create the ultimate flavor. Okay. Cinnamon Speak slowly so I can write this. I need 100 characters. Huh? What? <laughs> you talking, what in the world is happening? I said cinnamon and apple. That's not the ultimate flavor. Yeah. That's I need something, I need something that's going to win me. Gold that already Mar- a Marlboro, in anything. Yeah. A Marlboro trip. Oh. Um, you don't think you're going to win on apples and cinnamon? No. Nicotine cinnamon? and coffee. Yeah, Marlboro's and coffee. Cool. There you go. Come on, they want something like smart. I would go with. Uh, I wait I'd, a minute. I'd go Marlboro wants their... something smart for this contest to win. I figured a trip they'd to their go ranch. with. Uh... I would go with chocolate and sunflower seeds. Oh, that's pretty good. Hmm. It'd be good. That's um, be um, best candy bar. Best since flavor the combo. Snickers. Pretzels and chocolate. Yeah, see, I like to take when I get some chocolate. chocolate I like to get something cheese. salty with it. Or pretzels and goat cheese. I was gonna say, like, vinegar and goat cheese, but come on, you guys aren't helping me out any. Because oh, nobody knows what I the gave you hell a great you answer: Ch- chocolate and sunflower you seeds. You said two things that you would make the ultimate flavor combo. We've all given you those. Oh, limited to. Oh, all right. So I, don't, I can just write down two things. Never mind. Oh, you were you were mad at us because you thought you <laughs> needed more than a hundred characters. Yeah. yeah, Jesus Christ! I can't write. Oh, shit, I'm going with strawberry banana then. Oh, jeez, that's ultimate, not original. Ultimate flavor combo. Some, if you want to win that contest, you go sunflowers and chocolate. I'm telling you, go go cheese and pretzels. That's not bad either. It's fantastic. Boy, cold weather's finally here, huh? Yeah. Overnight lows in the Finger Lakes expected to drop into the upper 20s. Daytime highs in the 40s starting tomorrow. Yikes. Where'd you hear that information? Oh, the FL1 Weather Center with meteorologist Drew Montreal. Wow, that sounds great. I'll have to check that out myself. Did you know Finger Lakes 1.com has their own meteorologist and that he is customizing local weather for everyone in the Finger Lakes? He is um, intensely interested in local weather patterns at a level that most people can't even understand i mean he likes what we- <laughs> he likes weather he, he likes does. weather globally but yeah. he really finds what really floats his boat is local finger lakes weather and no one is going to give you a more accurate representation of what's going on in the finger lakes weather wise than drew montreal just last week i logged on to the finger lakes one.com local weather center and uh I had a soccer practice at 5.30 that night, and rain was moving in. He had created a map with lines showing where the rain would arrive at what time. And I saw that the rain wasn't going to arrive in here till after 6 p.m. So you knew you were good. And we were, and you know what? About 6.45, started raining. So check I mean, it out. you can watch your Syracuse station, your Rochester station, but what if you live in Lodi and you want to know what's happening in Lodi? What if you're from Phelps? What? Yeah. What? What if you're from Phelps? <laughs> what if you are from North Rose Wolcott? Yeah. Or Hammondsport. Log on. You ever check out the Finger Lakes One Weather Channel uh, with uh, Drew Montreal, Dandy? Nope. You should. A serious Taco Girl. Where do you get your weather? Uh, Weather Channel oh, app. Of course. Uh, I. Take the FingerLakes1.com Weather Center channel. Get your weather 
from the Weather Center, whether it's on our app or on our website. You think the Weather Channel cares about Seneca Falls? For one week now. I was unaware that I could do they this. They just care about your zip code. Yeah, they don't care. What are you doing there, Mysterious Talk Girl, that you were unaware of? She was unaware that there was a weather available to Bill her, local and customized. Yeah. Oh, well, it's also the most accurate forecast around. Guaranteed. It's the uh, <laughs> I just do the dice AccuWeather <laughs> 1 is what we call it, the AccuWeather 1 <laughs> forecast. If Drew is ever wrong, Danny will jump out of a plane. Without a parachute on. Right. You just, you just have to <coughs> die. He might survive. We'll do just fine. But with the cold weather here, it is time to do things like start the car in the morning, huh? When's oh, the last time you had worse. to do that? That would get us at three dollars fifty cents a gallon. You'll be cold, huh? You gotta start bringing a jacket with you when you head out, and um, maybe stay in on the weekend a little bit more. Me, when it gets colder, I cook more. Mm. I definitely cook more. I cooked my first sauce of the season yesterday. This, and how did it make you feel? Good. Cozy. Good about the changing weather. And uh, Dandy, what do you do, do different when winter rolls in? When I'm laying on my couch, I put a blanket on top of me. Yeah, I like that too. I start my yearly seasonal battle with my significant other over the thermostat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had mine primed up today. Yeah. Had the old heating and plumbing guy over. Give it an annual inspection. Still Ooh. got two more weeks for me until I turn it on, though. I'll I wish you. I wish that I could have lasted, but my wife insisted, so I turned it on the other day. Next Friday. I've probably already spent like twenty bucks. <laughs> tries, I turned mine on crazy. on demand. So mine was on yesterday. I turned it off today. Yeah. Because I didn't feel I needed it today. No, it was warm today, but it's the last one, according to meteorologist Drew Montreal. It got it's so cold over the weekend, the dog climbed under, under the blankets. Aww. He usually doesn't do that. That's when you know it's cold out. Mm-hmm. Then he hot boxed me. Did he? Or Dutch oven me, whatever you call it. What's that? He fucking ripped ass under the blankets, and it stunk something And then he pulled awful. the covers over both their heads. <laughs> yeah. No, when I sleep, I sleep with <laughs> like a dandy, but the covers <laughs> over both their heads, and they jumped up and down and went, wee. And you rubbed his belly. I yeah. sleep with the blankets over my head. Do you? Everything but like my nose. I like bury my face except for my I do that breathing extremities. Too. I actually do the same thing, but with a pillow. I put a pillow over. Yeah, I do that. My eyes and my head. Because nice I think cool if somebody, I think if somebody breaks into my house, they won't see me. <laughs> I'm more of a traditional night. sleeper, like you see in the commercials for mattresses. On your side. Yeah, side or back. I uh, wish I could sleep on my back. Blanket up to the neck. Yeah, I can, I can sleep either way. I don't get people that can't sleep on their back. or. I can sleep on my back if I'm on the couch, but if I'm in bed, I'm straight to the stomach. Oh, stomach. That hurts my back. I can't do it. I'm a backer side. No, I like to fucking spread right out. There are many ways to sleep. Touch all four corners of that bitch. But uh, a lot of news this week. Uh, matter of fact, a little local flair. It's the SaucePod uh, News Report. Dateline, Canadagua, New York. Canadagua man poured urine inside vehicle. Dang. Glenn R. Howell, age 81. Huell, Howell. Guess it's not important unless you're Glenn R. Howell, if it's pronounced Huell. Right. But anyways, this 81-year-old guy lives at uh, 143 North Main <laughs> Street, Apartment 7 in Canadagua, was charged at 6 p.m. on October 16th with second-degree criminal mischief according to uh, Ontario County Sheriffs. According to the police, the suspect caused $8,500 of damage to the victim's motor vehicle by allegedly pouring two quarts of his own urine over the interior of the vehicle along with inside the defroster vents. Ooh, that's awful. 
The interior damage rendered the vehicle unusable, and the damage was covered by the victim's insurance company. And that uh, incident actually occurred back at 6 a.m. on October 2nd. Other charges are still pending. An order of protection is in place, issued by the Phelps Town Court, which orders the suspect to stay away from the victim. What was the man's beef? Doesn't say here, but he must really... Uh, well, he dis- saved up his urine. Two quarts of it. So that That's he could nuts. go and... Old man urine. Yep. You know? Two quarts of old man urine in your car. That's worse than your dog shit in there. I almost got enough urine to pour in that car. I'm finally going to get that guy back. <laughs> what the <clears throat> heck? Uh, he must have had some beef. Dan, Dandy, have you ever bottled your own urine? Come on. I've Tell, peed in the bottle Yeah, before. I've peed in the bottle. You didn't save it, though. No. For a revenge scenario. <laughs> Threw it out the window of the car it was in. Oh, nice. You ever pee it out of a moving car? No. Just out the window? <laughs> no. I, I peed out of the back of a moving truck onto somebody else's head because I was next to the windows and I forgot that the pee oh, was Oh, man, that's horrible. Oh, that is awful. You're lucky there's not a news report about you. Yeah. Peeing on somebody's head. That's nasty business. Dateline, York, Pennsylvania. Thief returns giant pumpkin with apology note. Dang. A thief has returned a 255-pound pumpkin that a central Pennsylvania boy won by correctly guessing its weight, along with a note apologizing for the theft. Nine-year-old Jaden Newcomer of New- of York won the pumpkin at an Oktoberfest celebration in Windsor Township. He had displayed the giant pumpkin on his family's porch until it was stolen last week. But the York Dispatch reports the pumpkin was back on the family's porch Sunday evening after it returned from a weekend trip. The thief also left a note saying, I'm really sorry about taking your pumpkin. It was wrong of me. You earned the pumpkin. I didn't think my actions through, nor realize who they were affecting. Sincerest apologies. Amy Newcomer says her son is very excited and beside herself. Dandy, did you ever steal and smash pumpkins? You're a you're a pumpkin smasher. I don't know. I don't think so. Not really? before Halloween, anyways. That's I think if I would have, do. I think if I did it, it was after Halloween. It's a mean thing to do. It is really rotten. Kids do all that work. I was nice enough to let it what? until after Halloween. Right. That's really nice of you. So this guy stole the pumpkin, and he must have found out post El Facto. It was a, diff- a little boy's pumpkin. All right. He must have found out, uh, what do they call it when you can't pass a lie after the fact? El facto, post el facto. Oh. Yeah, post el facto. That's Spanish for <laughs> after the fact. Yeah, but that's what they call it <laughs> when like you can't arrest somebody and then pass the law that you're charging them with. That's called post el facto. Polly, always, if you're listening, please confirm. <laughs> Okay. Dateline Mountain City, Tennessee. Officer kicked off the force after shooting a squirrel <coughs> in a dollar store. <laughs> I'm delirious. I'm fucking delirious right now. I think that's amazing. Jody Putnam was fired from the Mountain City Police Force after a September 27th incident where he shot his gun at an unarmed squirrel. You don't say. Which had found its way into the Dollar General store. Animal control was contacted at first to help get rid of the rascally rodent, but when that officer was unavailable, Putnam answered the call. He tried to apprehend the squirrel suspect by shooting his gun inside the store, according to property owner Carl Duffield. Now, this is a quote from Carl Duffield. I'm going to read it as it is, but it might be hard to understand. <laughs> shooting back there, of course, that should not have been. That should not have happened. Then they began to spray it with mace and pepper spray. There was a lot of people that come out, and just like me, they came out, and they were coughing and a-hacking. They were coughing and a-hacking. It was comical, but I'm sure they didn't feel that way, the customers that came out. (laughs) They were coughing and a-hacking. It was comical, but I'm sure they didn't feel that way, the customers that came out. Guys, got his things together. It is unknown how many shots Putnam fired in Dollar General store officials. <laughs> Dollar General store officials. <laughs> <laughs> they brought in their national team. Have refused to release the surveillance tape 
when bystanders were allowed back in the store, they saw the dead squirrel pinned under his shoe. Oh. <laughs> He's like, you can safe to bring him in here. <laughs> Anybody hurt? <laughs> in Mountain City, officers are required to make a written statement to their supervisor whenever they fire Wetman Putnam, an officer with nearly two decades of experience, refused to explain the squirrel shooting, so he was fired by the town boards, uh, by the town's board of mayor and alderman. So wait a minute, that guy was like an off-duty police officer? No, he was an on-duty police officer. And he really felt like he needed to go in there and shoot a squirrel? He responded to the scene. he was just a, like a, a guy with a gun. There was a call from the Dollar General store officials. To the police office. To, yeah, or 911, whatever. They said, there is a squirrel loose in the Dollar General. <laughs> oh, my God. Someone get down here quick. And so they, Putnam responded. They tried to call animal control. That person was unavailable. And then Putnam took matters into his own hand and went into the store and tried to shoot the squirrel. And it sounded like he tried to use mace and pepper spray as well. That is ridiculous. I saw that happen in Seneca Falls. Did you? Now, Danny. I was on my lunch break. How long ago? I was uh, last summer. Okay. And I was driving past Gould's Pumps on Fall Street. Mm Mm-hmm. And, you know, the bushes, like, right up against the building? Sure. I see a cop standing there. And I see him, like, holding his gun out. And I'm like, what the hell's Get going on? Town. And then I hear, pop, pop. I'm like, he just fucking shot something. So I go back Raccoon. to work. And I call my mom because she works there. Yeah. I'm like, hey, why's there a cop out front <laughs> shooting, shooting shit? Gun. And she goes, what are you talking about? And she goes, hold on. And she's called down and asked somebody. And there was a baby deer. Aww. And it had ran <laughs> into the front of the building. And it broke its front leg, so he just shot it and killed it. Holy smokes. Instead of nursing it back to health. <laughs> he didn't spray it with pepper spray first. But when I drove by, baby deer with broken legs. I didn't see a baby deer. I just saw a dude standing over a yeah. bush shooting a gun. I'm surprised that they would <laughs> let the officer discharge and they would uh, euthanize that deer in that manner. Um, You'd think they'd bring in someone from the Department of Animal Control that would maybe euthanize it with some sort of injection. I don't know if we. What, no. what, I don't know what goes on here. I don't know what kind of do departments that. we have around here, like that, or they just let the police handle matters like that. They do. Imagine that officer one day. You usually don't have to discharge your weapon, but someday, somewhere at a dinner party, someone will say to that officer, "Did you ever have to discharge your weapon in the line of duty?" He's like, "Sure did." Wow. He said, "Tell us about Listen, it. Come get in here, kids. <laughs> Listen to this. <laughs> this guy's a hero." Well, it was a sunny summer day, and it was a. Uh, I shot a baby deer whose front legs were broken in the head. <laughs> but first, I sprayed it with pepper spray in its face. Yep. Um, yeah, if there's like a rabid raccoon, cops handle that, right? They shoot him. Yo, yeah, that's good. So, no, they usually rabid. trap them. They usually I'm just do. saying, no, it's don't. the police that handle it, right? A ra- our a rabid our police, a rabid animal. It. Yeah. So it's the same situation. We don't have, like, animal control. There is animal control, though. There's a DEC. Yeah, there's local animal control Co- at the county level. It's county, yeah. though. Huh. Dandy ever kill a squirrel? Yeah, I hit one the other other day. Oh, with your car? With your car? You ever I feel bad when I do it. I did with a slingshot. When I was, no. When I was a kid, we shot a uh, frog with, um, like, a fully automatic BB gun. How did that make you it feel? It didn't make me feel good at no, all. Oh, it's horrifying. I've never shot another animal. I, neither have I. After I killed that squirrel, I was done. I'll eat the shit out of animals. I didn't think I was going to hit it. That's a slingshot, you know. I don't think I'm going to hit that thing. You I'm not very good at this. I did, too. He fell right down lifeless on the ground, and a, a, like a sickening warm wave washed over my body, and I was done. <laughs> Mysterious Taco Girl's not afraid to kill things, right? You you subscribe to a bow hunting magazine. No, I do not. <laughs> I've only killed things with my car. Was it? Well, I guess no. That's a lie. I've killed fish. I fi- I've had fish before. You caught a fish and killed it. That's You've caught a fish and let it die. Yeah. Right. Well, letting yeah, wh- something die is almost. It's not quite the same as killing it. It's a little worse because, like, if you shoot, say, you shoot a squirrel, you shoot a deer. They die pretty quickly, but if you catch a fish and then throw yeah, it in the bucket, I know you say that it's almost worse, but what I what I mean is it's not quite the same because you're not being mindful of it. You just forget about the fish and it dies, without you thinking about it every moment up until it dies. If you're gonna sh- kill something, willfully, that's different. You just catch the fish and then happily forget that it's there and it dies. You know what I mean? And you're not thinking about it, so you don't feel as bad? Yeah, I don't know. Well, I think there's definitely a difference between 
um, a fish and a squirrel the way we feel. I think people are fine with fish are foreign. Fish dying, yeah, they're just so fucking. They live in the water. Makes no sense. Total different environment than us. But a squirrel shares the same uh, air we breathe and and rears its young and stores its nuts for winter. Mm -hmm. The only thing is, I kind of hate squirrels. Why? Why? Um, I think squirrels play with my emotions. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> How so? Please explain. How so? Do they lead you on and then and then not call Break you? Break my heart. For some reason, and I don't know if it's me or it's just a figment of my imagination, squirrels mess with me. So they like they'll go and run past me and like nibble on my shoe and then run away. <laughs> a squirrel has or, never nibbled on no, your shoe. No, I swear crazy. to God, Ann. I have a in picture Seneca on my Falls? phone. Yeah. A squirrel has never ran up and nibbled on your that shoe was and in ran away. But Maybe every you're a modern day Snow home, White of some sort. Maybe. Every <laughs> night I come home, there's a squirrel. I have one black squirrel and one gray squirrel. And okay. it's, they're fat because they eat everything I ever plant or put in uh -oh. or every I got pumpkin I put out. They torment you. But, like, honest to God, squirrels could be a great come basis for a children's cartoon. Mm -hmm. Really close to me. From the perspective of the squirrels. Like, I'm just sitting on my back porch. See? Oh, yeah, there he's he is. He's right there. Mocking you. Is he looking right at <laughs> that picture there? Or no, he's got his he's ass got a mouthful of yes. pumpkin. <laughs> but on it, they just come close to me, and they don't even care, and they have no wow. respect for my You're personal like space. Dr. Doolittle. I hate them. But I've never killed one. <laughs> I don't but know what if I you ever got your hands but on them. But there's one black squirrel that's... They're mean. A jerk. The black squirrels are mean. That's a fact. Do you name them? Stupid black squirrel. <laughs> but look at how beefy that one is. Oh, if you I get mean, a red squirrel, eaten. that's that's that what looks you like a draw prairie line. dog. That looks more like a prairie dog than a squirrel. He's if, been eaten. If you see a red squirrel in your yard, house. you got to shoot him on sight. I want to trap the black squirrel. You know how you can make the squirrel into a squirrel, a stuffed squirrel, and it holds a little bottle of liquor. Yeah, <laughs> that's what you that would do. be a way to get him. You get them back, and then you can put it right in your window there, and then the gray one <laughs> would see it, and you'd be like, "Oh boy, if they're playing with your emotions." <laughs> oh, sorry, I ate your pumpkin. They're jerks. Well, the squirrels—I got a lot of squirrels in my yard, and generally they don't bother me too much, except for the fact that uh, my they dog goes crazy. They don't—they stay away from me. But they, uh, Mr. Tucker Burns doesn't like them. Yeah, uh, every window that he sees a squirrel, he's barking. And the thing is, the squirrels are no longer scared of the bark. Yeah. So there'll be a squirrel in like the lilac bush right in front of the window of our house. So he's literally just five feet from my dog, and my dog <laughs> will just incessantly bark at him. He won't move. <laughs> so therefore, he is indirectly, um, that squirrel is indirectly really annoying me. But I think there's a couple families of squirrels in my yard. So. Which is good because if there was some sort of an apocalypse, I could uh, you could eat them, could trap them and eat them. But they're, for now, unless they'd... they became mutated and grew ten times their size, well, they would just be more meat. I would just have to yeah, but them. you'd have to conquer them. What are you gonna do to a giant squirrel? I have a gun. I'd shoot him with. I'm talking about him. I don't have any guns at my house. What's he gonna do? I would probably confront it with a baseball bat. One on one, mano y mano. <laughs> Man versus giant squirrel. How big is this giant squirrel? <coughs> I said ten times their size, but I'm gonna go with fifty times their size now. So well, now that's give bigger me a height than me. and weight. I'm gonna say it's as big as he is. As tall it's as I am, and yeah. twice the weight. Well, that, squir those proportionally squirrely. But if I looked that squirrel in the eye, if it was so big that I stood there and looked him in the eye. And it chattered at you? Yeah, but it would be yeah. like a bear. <laughs> it would be at least twice my size because he's longer mm -hmm. than me. I'm taller than I am well, long. Well, I'm just saying proportionally as big as you. I don't know. Well, I'd take it down because I have opposable digits. And while he may be quicker, I don't oh, think man. the only way he could attack me is by biting me. So every time he'd lunge, I would jam him with my baseball bat. That's They're kind of terrifying though. thought. They're they a squirrel like that. It's kind of scary. Yeah, squirrels actually are nothing but a nuisance, but if they were larger sized, they would become a serious <laughs> and, and aggressive. That, that, like a black squirrel. I hate squirrels. That seems to me like that could be the basis of a nice, awesome movie. I hate squirrels. But, uh, what was it? I'm trying to think of a good name. I'll think of it. I'm not Rocky. As, I'm not, uh, not as Rocky the Quick as squirrel. I normally am right now. Boxy. No, move on. Boxy, <laughs> move on. The These are not working out. Well, anyways, uh, that's the news. 
Whoops. Anyways, that's the news. <laughs> Baby, you got a stew going. <coughs> well, we're just past the one hour mark here. It's at uh, 9.09 Eastern Time here in the Finger Lakes. The beautiful Finger Lakes. Region of upstate New York. And the nice thing about listening to the sauce pod is that uh, you're always going to learn something you didn't know. Um, whether it's from one of our other segments or this one, a segment called uh, Today I Learned with Polly Always. Today I Learned with Polly Always. Dandy? Dear Sauce Pod, homeboy, <coughs> homeboys, and homegirl. I like that. Today I learned that the strangers in your dreams are actually people that you have seen in real life. The human brain is responsible for many complex creations, but it cannot invent the image of people. So the strangers that you meet in your dreams actually have the faces of people who you have once seen in real life but forgotten. Like your childhood mailman or someone you bumped into on the sidewalk. Since you had laid eyes on quite a few individuals, the brain has a huge cast of characters to choose from when you fall asleep. With much respect and devotion, Polly always. P.S. Fuck Roger. Huh. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to say anything because last week I said something and Polly always got mad at me. I feel like most of the time when I dream, it's not strangers. So it's not. It's but this is I he's know. saying when there is a stranger. The, if there is a stranger, it's not really a stranger. It's someone that you have because your I mind that, can't invent a, a person. Lot of strangers. Now, and that dreams. is where I want to say something here. the The first few of these today, I learned there was like scientists that the theories were named after. There was like tests and data. I j all I'm saying is I want to I want some footnotes where I can read where this you is want Polly always to cite I want an annotation or yeah I want I want some citations I take a I I always take it under account that Polly's going to do his due diligence I know and that's what he said last week like I need to just lay back and trust Polly always facts. which is that's <laughs> what I'm doing I'm doing it but I like to you know I like to read my accounts firsthand I had a dream. Just two nights ago, maybe it was last night, but I it was one of the weirdest dreams I've had in a long time, and I only remember one dream a month, maybe at the most, but this one, I was basically dealing meth with Gustavo from Breaking Bad. It's awesome. And at some point during my dream, I crossed Gustavo, and then the shit got real. Yeah. Um, I don't remember exactly how it played off, except for that there was... A lot of running around, and there was some big uh, cylinder of dust, uh, po white powder that I disposed of for some reason because I felt it was important. But all the characters in that dream, a lot of them were strangers. Some of them were from the TV show, but there were random other people. And so Polly's saying that those random other people I'd seen somewhere. Maybe someone you saw in line at the bank, and you just you don't know them. But yeah, I like the part here. It says. You know where he says so. The strangers that you meet in your dreams actually have the faces of people that you have once seen in your real life but forgotten. And then he says, uh, "The brain has a huge cast of characters to choose from when you fall asleep." That, that's what's interesting to me is why yeah. the brain would choose while you're sleeping to insert this person into your story, into your dream story. I remember a professor that I once uh, listened to give a talk about uh, psychology. And he was talking about how the brain finds ways to entertain itself like that. Because that's, I mean, that's what's going on. While you're sleeping, your brain's uh, entertaining itself. That's how he it's described it. It's at work. It's it. recharging. It's uh, sorting. Yeah. Cataloging. Processing. When's the last time you had a dream, Dandy? I don't remember my dream. Ever? I had a dream the other day about the Jerry Seinfeld because you were going to that concert. You mentioned it to me, and the next night I had a dream about Jerry Seinfeld. Not about him, but he was in my dream. Right. What What? What, what did he do in well, your I dream? I don't even remember now, but it was just so stupid because 
It's so obvious why I dreamed about him, but what's the point? Well, serious taco girl, what's the last dream you remember having? Uh, I don't want to share my dream. Really? So it was obviously sexual in nature. No. <laughs> or what they call in um, these parts a wet dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I don't think girls have those. Oh, I don't Really? Know. Come on. No, I really don't think they do. So was your dream like so just out of off the wall? My dreams are off the wall. They're crazy. They're weird. They're. They all mean something, you know. Bizarre. I got dream books. <laughs> I look them up. Nice. So, yeah, what's so the general theme of your dreams? Without telling us the content of them, what's the general theme of your dreams according, like, to your uh, dream books? Is there a common theme? Oh, I don't look most of them up anymore. Because I've just accepted the fact that they're crazy. Do you when feel like maybe you're crazy a little bit? Is that what you? Th that's why you don't want to share. Most certainly. Oh, you don't think like they're sneaking over into your real life no. slowly, and you're starting to lose your mind a no. little bit. Just wondering. <laughs> I picture Dandy's dreams as he, he like turns into a squirrel in his dreams, and he goes and lives with like rabbits and squirrels, and it's all just really happy, good dreams. Yeah. <laughs> they all just snuggle together, smoke pot together, yeah. and snuggle, eat nuts, and my dreams must not be ma bad. I don't like wake up and remember them. I want to kill myself. Yeah, but that's a proven the fact that girls remember their dreams more so than boys do. Is it? Man. Yeah. Well, it looks like... I'm not going to believe unless I hear it from Polly <laughs> always. I think I have a book. I'll bring it in so I'll, I can quote the book. I would like to know what my Breaking Bad dream was. And uh, Were you wearing a Poyos Hermanos uniform? I don't remember what I was wearing. Um, a lot of times, too, my dreams will take place like... Like, this was a whole elaborate thing, but the whole time I was trying to, like, um, avoid Gustavo or even when we were working together, it was all in this one basic arena of area. So it never, my dream never took me far away, but so much happened inside that area. I just remembered my dream from last night. I forced myself to remember it. I was in Area Records, but it wasn't Area Records. It was much, much larger. The Record Archive? It was more like the <coughs> Record Archive. But as far as you were concerned, you were at Area Records in Geneva. Yep. And I, and I had to leave, but it was in like a mall area. Like a like a Ithaca Commons sort of mall esque. Okay, that's now I remember that. That's great and useless. Well, once again, uh, something we didn't know. Today I learned with Polly always. Well, about ready to wind down episode one twenty two here of the Sauce Pod, but before we do, we need to give you one tip or recommendation. That you can uh, try to implement into your life so you can be as cool and awesome as we are here on the Sauce Pod. Dandy, what do you recommend this week? I recommend everybody go on YouTube and watch the full length movie Rad. If it's you're an eighty movie. if you're an eighties kid, it, you know this a movie. Full length on you YouTube? Love. Yeah, Brad found Angry Brad found and told me about it today. That's awesome. I went home and watched the first fifteen minutes. He puts the red in Brad. I have the biggest smile on my face for it. It's a great movie. All day. What's that? And Thrashing is on there too. Really? What about Gleaming the Cube? Are those skateboarding movies or something? Rad, Rad is, is a BMX. It's a bike movie. Oh. Thrashing is a skateboard movie. And Gleaming the Cube is a skateboard movie. And neither of them are on DVD. There's, I think there's a Rad's not on DVD? No, I think there's a petition out that you can sign to get... I think it's universal oh, to put it out on smokes. DVD. It it's on VHS. Important. That's a good recommendation, Danny. I'm going to do that. I haven't seen that movie in ages. Oh, you're gonna, it's awesome. My brother had it on VHS. I remember. I rented it so many times from Luigi's <laughs> yeah. that it wouldn't play in my VCR yeah, anymore. Yeah, that's the kind of, that's, I think what ended up with ours. It was just worn out. Yeah. So good. My recommendation is um, to use the Finger Lakes One Weather page. I that's talked about one. it earlier, but that's what I got written down this week um, with our own meteorologist. And especially now with weather changing and winter storms blowing through and Lewis Bedalman out of the industry. These kind of bad things just blow it. 
Take the uh, FingerLakes1.com Weather Center 7-Day Challenge. Visit it once a day for 7 days or more. And tell me that it's not the best, most customized and comprehensive weather coverage for residents of the Finger Lakes region. Saucy Joe, what do you recommend this week? I recommend candy corn jello shots. Oh, gosh, I don't. Those were so gross. With pig fat on top of them? It's yeah. not pig so fat. So, Mysterious Taco Girl made a candy corn jello shots for her party. A lot of them. I mean, there's a, bu- a variety of flavors of jello shots. I got a picture. What's the candy corn all about? What makes it candy corn? Was there candy corn suspended in there? I want to tell you this. It doesn't taste anything like candy corn. Oh, it's supposed to taste like candy no, corn. No, it didn't. No, it's not supposed to. It's just supposed to look like it. Look at Oh, you can't. Wow, look at all those jello shots. Can you, you got candy corn close up? Well, I mean, I can't. See those ones? They're second from the right? Yeah. They're, they're tri-layer candy corn. Yeah, she, she had to let them set... And then pour the next layer on, and then let them set again, yep. and then pour a layer of duck fat on top. A little jello there art. No duck fat. <laughs> it looked like they it was were awful. Fat. They were awful. I will never make them ever again. Yeah, so they tasted was, bad. They weren't that good. Though. So you really wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend the apple cinnamon. Ones. Uh, that sort of was, so was going to be my recommendation. Yeah, no, oh, I'm sorry. Apple. The green apple ones were the best. So there's an apple pie with green apple jello, and then there was a hot cinnamon. With that was green like Goldschlager. Yeah. Or some sort of cinnamony schnapps. It's good. Dear Stucker Girl, what do you recommend? Well, since I can't Sorry, recommend I jello that. shots anymore. Um, I don't know. He stole your recommendation? I'm sorry. Yeah. I guess I'll recommend this ever so sweet Optimus Prime I s- sweatshirt. I th- my wife showed me a picture of that. And I was like, I gotta get James one of those. It's awesome. Amazon. That's just a sweatshirt, and no, no, it's not a uh, actual costume. No, nope, it's just, the just cool like a little kid. The sweatshirt. hood isn't the coolest part. The chest is the coolest part because yeah, it's got it's the front of the truck on it. it looks it's awesome. It's pretty awesome, and I have to say, it was a hit. I bet it was. Kids from all ages. He opened it up and said, "I'm Prime. It was cute. Transformers fan. Yeah. Time. James wouldn't have known what it was. And then it took me 45 minutes to try and figure out how to put his Optimus Prime transformer into the truck. How's old James getting on at school? He's doing well. He's doing much better after his incident with the principal. He's doing much better. We'll see. He's only two months into his school career. Yeah. I'm not right. I'm not writing him off yet. It's all new. Let's see what happens. You're not going to pull him out of there and just no. let him go without schooling? Yeah, I'm not going to lock him in a closet or anything. Not yet, anyway. He lets me down again and he'll see the backside of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tan his hide. Well, any parting shots, my friends, before we uh, pu- call it a wrap on episode 122? I got one on bed. It was coconut milk that made them so nasty. Oh, no wonder. That's not jello. <laughs> there should not be any no milk in Jello, right? There shouldn't be any. Yeah, yeah. That's what made, gave it that consistency. It's making me sick now thinking about it. They're gross. Well, unfortunately, no time uh, to talk about the behavioral sync with Will Wiles or by Will Wiles this week. Um, we'll be back next week. It will be the twenty eighth of October at eight o five p.m. Eastern for episode one twenty three. One two three. Um, until then, my friends, uh, if you're out for some early trick-or-treating this weekend, go back home and wait for Halloween. 